serious what was your creepy, unexplainable story as a child that was confirmed by your parents to have happened. Asterisk asterisk attention. Serious tag notice asterisk 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 jokes, puns, and off-topic comments are not permitted. HTTPS colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash r slash askreddit slash wiki slash index hash wiki underscore dash rule underscore six dash closing parenthesis in asterisk any asterisk comment, parent or child. Asterisk parent comments that aren't from the target group will be removed, along with their child replies. Asterisk report comments that violate these rules. Posts that have few relevant answers within the first hour and posts that are not appropriate for the serious tag will be removed. Consider doing an AMA request instead. Thanks for your cooperation and enjoy the discussion. Asterisk I am a bot, and this action was performed automatically. Please contact the moderators of this subreddit, message, compose, to equals, r, ask credit, if you have any questions or concerns. Asterisk. One time my brother, his friend, and I saw lights in the sky that darted around like UFOs. We went to get my mom and she was totally nonchalant about it. Yep, those are UFOs, she said, and went back in the house. Her response was so subdued that we figured she was humoring us and they weren't actually UFOs. Years later I asked her about it and she said she had to force herself to act calmly because she was terrified. When my family went to the Georgian mountain region, we rented a cottage. Two bedrooms, so my brother and I took one and our dad took the other with his GF. I woke up in the middle of the night to three figures in the room, all standing in various places, none of which were visible from the entrance of the room. I woke my brother up and we screamed for our dad, but when he came into the room, he refused to look at the figures and just told us to hide under the covers. Wasn't exactly confirmed, but his refusal to look where they were standing after begging him was telling. Shit still scares my brother and I. Kind of the opposite but I distinctly remember sitting in the front seat of a van with one of my mother's acquaintances whilst she went to collect something. The guy told me in detail about cutting up, cooking and eating humans, he said palms were a delicacy you could fry up like bacon. Only occurred to me as an adult that he was probably lying. About five years ago my parents were sitting out on the back porch on a summer night. Out of the corner of her eye my mom saw a person-sized white translucent figure float by a tree. She asked my dad if he saw it too and he said yes. He is a tough guy but he was really freaked out and so was she so they both went inside. The next morning my mom was walking by the tree where they saw the figure and she noticed a very old looking earring sitting on top of the dirt. She doesn't wear earrings and it wasn't the kind of earring I would wear. It looked like it belonged to an old lady and it was just dropped there. My mom brought it inside and put it in her jewelry box. The next day it was sitting in the middle of the basement floor. From then on I started hearing footsteps and whispering in my room at least once a week until I moved out. Not necessarily creepy, but when I was around 11 or so, my mom and I were going about 40 miles outside of town for a typical orthodontist appointment. The trip typically took about 35 minutes give or take a few for traffic, however this one time I kinda zoned out while being driven and upon arriving we remarked, wow that was fast. We were earlier for my appointment than usual despite leaving at a consistent time for each appointment. Upon looking at our vehicle's clock, and confirming with a watch my mom had on, it had mysteriously taken us only 10 minutes to drive to drive the usual 35 minute distance. We have no recollection of anything happening during those 10 minutes, and it never happened again, but it left us with a very weird feeling. We still wonder what we drove through to this day. So I don't actually remember this but my mom told me about it. My grandfather died when I was a year old. Prior to his death, he loved to play with me and would make me laugh in this very specific way. The night he died, my mom heard me making noise. So she goes in assuming I'm crying but I'm not. I'm staring at the ceiling, laughing hysterically just like my grandfather used to make me laugh. She's still convinced he came to say goodbye to me. My granny died when I was little. I don't even remember her. My aunt and mom always told me this story. I was at my house when I was little, I think about four. The phone rang and I answered it. They got on to me for answering the phone. I told them it was my granny calling to see if I was okay. I told her yes and hung up. She had recently passed away. 
They said they were a little creeped out by it, but insisted it really happened. My mom said that I used to have premonitions when I was little, under the age of 10. My great aunt and great uncle were like grandparents to me and used to come visit in the summer from Mexico to the US. I would miss them terribly then they would go. One year when they were leaving, I cried and cried. My mom said, don't worry. They'll be back next year. I remember sobbing and throwing a small child fit. Apparently I said to my mom, no you don't understand. Tio, great uncle, is never coming back. And she kept trying to reassure me they'd be back next year. I kept repeating, he's never coming back. I didn't say anything about my great aunt, sure enough, he passed away and never came back within a few weeks or months. My mom said it was really creepy and I also predicted my great aunt passing as well. In the house I grew up in every night at around midnight these big loud footsteps would go stomping up and down the hallway a few times, I'd often think it was my dad getting up in the night so sometimes I would stick my head out in the hall to see him but there was no one there and I'd hear him snoring in his room. This isn't a particularly creepy story but it's just strange that everyone confirms they heard these footsteps and no one was ever that bothered by it, it's like it happened for as long as we could remember so we just accepted it. I'm not 100% sure this fits because my mom confirmed it years ago, then denied it when I asked her again a couple months ago, but here it is. When I was little, my dresser, it was long but pretty short, sat against the wall with one of the ends pointed to my door. That dresser is heavy, an old wood one with all sorts of kid crap neatly arranged on top. Since it was in my bedroom, the floor was carpet. I always slept with the door closed. One night, with no explanation, the dresser tipped over, but instead falling forward, it fell 180 degrees to the side, falling in front of my door, all the kid crap spilling to the side. My mom ran to get me, but couldn't open the door as it was being blocked by the dresser. Eventually, with her pushing and me pulling on the dresser, she was able to slip in and move the dresser out of the way. Nothing was damaged, not even the glass figurines I had. My dad helped put it upright the next day and we moved on. Years later, I remembered the incident and asked my mom about it, expecting to learn that I blew it out of proportion and it only fell forward or something like that. Nope, she remembered that night as well. However, she added one detail that I could never figure out. She thought she heard me jumping on the bed that night, and that was why she thought the dresser tipped over. I had been asleep, I have no idea where she heard that noise coming from. When I was young, I apparently had a few odd interactions with animals. I would know a person had animals before we went in the house, they tended to come over to me before my parents, mostly just little things that were probably explainable by me a fairly observant little kid. The one that sticks out to my parents though telling it the way they do, is we went to a new car garage to have them work on our car. As we pull up, the owner has a big old black lab laying in the middle of the lobby. The guy informs us the dog is comfortable with people, we can pet him if we want. I shake my head and say, he's sad though. Dad looks at me asks why I think that. I reply, he lost his ball, he's sad now. Dad said the owner went pale, stared at me for a minute, and then looked at Dad said, he's had a favorite ball for 10 years that just went down the sewage drain yesterday and I couldn't get it back out. In Mom's seaside hometown, there was an offshore decommissioned lighthouse. Even though utilities to it had long been shut off and the lighthouse was locked, it would randomly light up, clearly visible in all directions. No one could explain it. It happened so infrequently and at odd hours of the night that by the time officials examined the structure, there were no signs of activity. To this day, as I've mentioned here once before, the lighthouse remains mysterious and a bit creepy. I'm a parent of toddlers and kids now, and I have a creepy story from last year. We were driving with my then three-year-old son in the car, and stopped at a red light next to a cemetery. Out of nowhere, my son looked over at the cemetery and said, there are people laying down there, and they can't get up. My wife asked my son what he was talking about and he pointed to the cemetery and said, all of the people laying down in the park are stuck. My wife and I just looked at each other in silence completely freaked out. At this point in our son's life, there had been no deaths in the family and we had never discussed death with him. I'm still creeped out when I think about it. 
My mom and I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina for a few years when I was in middle school. Once in the middle of a bright summer day we were in our well-lit condo when suddenly it went pitch black. It lasted maybe two to three seconds but it was enough for both of us to notice and remember almost 20 years later. It was like someone flipped the switch off and on for the sun really quick. When I was a kid my mom used to work at a small grocery store and she went there before breakfast to get fresh bakery goods when she had the afternoon shift. Then she used to wake me up for school and ask how I slept and I used to tell her what dream I had that night, if any. One morning I told her I dreamed that two guys broke into the store and they left a red screwdriver on the floor. My mom was shocked because there really was a break in that night. That is why she couldn't buy stuff for breakfast that morning but couldn't talk with police or colleges at the time to get more details. I then went to school. My mom did the afternoon shift and on the evening, when she came home, she told me that the police really did found a screwdriver on the scene, which belonged to the burglars. This all happened in Europe, a small town around the early 90s. No CCTV and the burglars never got caught, but this was still a very strange experience. My mom made me fill out a lottery ticket the next day. Lol but never won with it and never had such dreams since then. The shoelace. I woke up one morning and the shoelace from one of my sneakers had completely vanished. Just on one shoe, the lace on the other shoe was still there. I do not ever remove the laces of my shoes. The shoes were right beside me by my bed all night. I have always, always been a ridiculously light sleeper. The slightest sound wakes me up. Nothing woke me that night. Moreover, the door was closed to my room, the floorboards creaked whenever anyone stepped on them, and the room was small. I 100% would have noticed someone coming in. Nothing else was disturbed in the entire house. Nothing had been moved or taken, no signs of forced entry. My mom noticed nothing all night. She also has no sense of humor. There was nobody in the house aside from me and her, and nobody but us had the keys. We didn't have mice, and there were no traces of the missing lace anyway. There is absolutely no way that shoelace could have gone missing. My mum remembers it well, but as soon as I mention it she immediately doesn't want to talk about it because it freaks her out. Either somebody broke into the house and did nothing except take a single shoelace, or the house was haunted and a ghost took it. At my parents' house I used to hear my mom calling out to me when she didn't, and she confirmed she'd hear me call out to her when I didn't. That was a common occurrence. Also, whenever I'd be alone for a little while if my mom was late from work or at the grocery store, I'd usually be in the main living room playing N64. I would oftentimes hear loud banging sounds from upstairs as if a heavy piece of furniture tipped over. I'd go check and nothing was out of place. Both my mother and grandmother have confirmed similar experiences when they're alone in he house. There was also the time I was downstairs on my laptop. Everyone else was in bed, it was after midnight and I didn't realize just how dark everything had gotten without the lights on. I'm zoned out when I begin to hear what sounds like a murmuring from behind me. Like the low rumble you'd hear at a gathering when people are talking and you can't make out conversation. The hairs on my neck immediately stood up and my body locked up from fear. Tears ran down my face from the physical reaction my body was having. I refused to acknowledge it and kept staring at my laptop screen in silence. It took forever for my body to go back to normal. Some time later I told my mother what happened and it freaked her out because she said she's heard the murmuring as well. I've always hated that house. When I was little, probably about five, my great-grandmother passed away from cancer. We were very close. She watched me nearly every day and would sing to me before my naps. You are my sunshine in particular. It was a few days after she died and I can instinctively remember waking up to someone stroking my hair and singing You Are My Sunshine. At first, I thought it was my mom, but it was unlike her to do something like that. I turned and found no one there. I even remember getting up and checking my parents' room to find they were both asleep. Both my parents kind of just nonchalantly dismiss it, but I swear it was her saying goodbye to me. Thanks for watching. See you later. Thank you.